Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books. I just did a video about this. It's okay when we do it. That's what the legacy media say. It's okay for legacy media critics to trash Black Adam, face no accusations of being racist or review bombing. Why is that? You know, the video that I did uh, just yesterday was Woke Media Panic, and this is about a guy in Forbes who decided to say, uh, look, it's impossible for a Black Adam to be financially successful. And for the long term, the long term, the term that is not really accountable, to make movies for the fans. But this is another whole aspect, and it's coming from the great website, Bounding Into Comics. I want to get into this article. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up when you like it. It's a huge help. You guys have been great. The channel is doing really well. I appreciate it. So this is from Bounding Into Comics. Legacy media critics trash Black Adam. They face no accusations of being racist or review bombing. Why is that? Why is it okay when they do it? Maybe it's not okay. In a continuation of Warner Brothers Discovery's particularly rough year, their last tentpole release of 2022, DC's Black Adam has been met with near universal panning from legacy media critics. And curiously, none of them have been decried as racist or had their actions described as review bombing for disliking a film with a non-white lead. That's right, The Rock is not white. So all of the critics hate it, and it's okay when they do it. Okay, let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Since awakening from his slumber on October 21st, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, his passion project has, as of this writing, amassed one of the worst critic scores of the year, as calculated by twin review aggregate sites, Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes. That's interesting. Why are they attacking him? And, and how do they get away with that? On the former, the Justice Society of America starring feature currently holds a 41 out of 100 score based on 50 reviews. That's pretty terrible. While on the latter, the thoughts of 223 critics have left the film with an equivalent rating of 39%, thus officially bestowing Black Adam with the not-so-coveted title of Certified Rotten. Okay, so that's going to damage it. I was even talking to a friend in the comics industry the other day, and he said, yeah, I heard the movie wasn't that good. I said, look at the audience score. Don't look at the critics score. Anything good is, is always going to be review bombed now by critics. And then they did this great article at Bounding Into Comics. Yet upon reading the actual reviews themselves, it seems that the critics held far less of a favorable opinion of the film than the above averages could even suggest. Quote, Dwayne Johnson is at his most uninteresting muscles and spandex as an ancient Egyptian bodybuilder who <laughs> bodybuilder wasn't a bodybuilder who must learn like Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy that sarcasm is cool and that like in Arnie in Terminator 2 torture and murder is not dismissed the times Kevin Marr Pierce Brosnan appears as a Doctor Strange knockoff called Doctor Fate and the whole thing is buttressed by some ugly political revisionism Echoing a particularly common criticism echoed among tired comic book movie fans, Glenn Weldon wrote for NPR, <laughs> NPR, I'm sure they loved it, right? It seems both obvious and inevitable to note that this many years into superhero cinema's ascendancy, novelty comes at a premium. Even so, Black Adam seems perfectly content to pick over the wilted remains of the superhero movie Salad Bar. The New York Times' Maya Phillips similarly wrote of the film, It's dull, listless, a superhero movie that hits all the expected touchstones of the genre under the guise of a transgressive new anti-hero story. Well, it's a superhero story, Maya. It's going to be like a superhero story when it comes from Warner Brothers Discovery. God knows what you're going to get from Marvel, but DC Films is a little bit more focused. It, if... As the credits roll for Black Adam, you're still stuck wondering what defines a bad hero or a good anti-hero. Know that at least the film clarifies one thing, what makes a bad hero movie, she savagely concluded. She's so, so, they're so nasty. And no accusation, it's okay when they do it. It's okay when they do it. But if you have the slightest criticism of the Eternals, the slightest criticism of She-Hulk, and you say, well, Explain to me why She-Hulk's origin had to change 
Their answer is racist. Continuing this line of soullessness-based criticism, the AV Club and the AV Club really hates David Zasloff. I've had several articles I've gone through on there. They really hate David Zasloff. Phil Perello admitted, Black Adam unfortunately resembles large chunks of what came before, a brooding, weightless CG punchathon shot with the same grimy visual style of previous Snyder first entries in the DCEU. A movie full of under-cranked, slow-mo action. It's really okay to let this aesthetic go, Warner Brothers. They will not. People like it. All and over-plotted world building that delivers more information than emotion because the movie struggles to ground this world on the backs of characters worth emotionally investing in, he added. Oh, it's a superhero. It was a good superhero movie. Even those reviews classified as positive struggle to give any sort of solid praise or recommendation of the film. You would think they would note that it was a fairly diverse film and that, you know, that, that's to be complimented, right? I mean, that's supposed to be like the big currency to these guys. Make no mistake, asserted the Washington Post's Michael O'Sullivan, Black Adam proceeds with predictable action sequences, tiresome fight scenes, and the now requisite sacrifice of a major character. But it's that seasoning of radical politics, the theme expressed in the film as a question of whether freedom fighters should have to play by the rules of war, that gives it a bit of spice. Whether that's enough to set Black Adam apart in a world that's all arguably has too many superhero movies is unclear. Okay, that's positive. Speaking specifically of Johnson's performance as Teth Adam, also Black Adam, Vulture, <laughs> Vulture also hates David Saslow. Vulture critic Bilge Ebri explained, there is, it turns out, a narrative reason for the character's refusal to feel things, but it's a dopey reason, and it feels like a cop-out. Worse, it undercuts the movie. Johnson is so emotionless for so much of the film that if you told me he wasn't actually there for a shoot, and that they just used a still photo of his face to animate his scenes, I'd believe you. I don't know what she was expecting. Honestly, after more than a decade of overbaked cookie-cutter superhero flicks, I'll take it, he ultimately sighed. Just don't ask me to care about anybody. Okay, you don't have to care about anybody. Black Adam is a superlative and clever example of this sort of movie, coloring within the lines while drawing fascinating doodles on the margins. Matt Zoller cites more positively rephrased the above arguments in his review for RogerEbert.com. In its brash, relentless, overscaled way, Collect Sierra's film represents its audience and wants to be respected by it. Okay, that's sort of positive-ish. As noted above, these criticism over criticisms, overuse of CGI, uninteresting characters, nonsensical narratives, clear signs of studio meddling, are simpler to ones numerous fans have leveled at Hollywood's recent attempts to capitalize on a given long-established franchise's inherent audience base, such as a Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Wonder Woman 1984, or even the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Yet, as noted by many, including YouTuber Ryan Kinnell, no outlets are running hit pieces on detractors claiming that they're bigots engaging in bad faith review bombing Way to go, Ryan. Good point. No one is claiming that the Samoan slash black actor-led film's critical rejection is based on angry, straight, male, often white comic fans being unable to handle a changing world that's leaving them behind. Where are all of those complaints? Oh, it's okay when they do it. Without a specific confirmation from any of the involved parties, such as the studio, the outlet bosses, or even the reviewers themselves, it's impossible to say with 100% certainty why this narrative hasn't arisen around Black Adam. However, to caution a theory, it ostensibly seems that no one is rushing to play savior to Johnson and crew, even as Crescenta Sewell and Aldous Hodges, whose respective race swap performances of Cyclone and Hawkman, along with the rest of the JSA, were described as inconsequential and nonsensical by every near uh, critic because they can't use this film in a culture war narrative due to the fact it was not developed with spiteful intentions toward its audience. Well said. Looking back on the most controversial productions in recent years, such as Battlegrounds as She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Thor, Love and Thunder, and even WandaVision, all expressed a disdain for their tentative audiences. 
From the writer's room to the marketing to the actual finished products themselves, the superhero shows and films which have received the most backlash and subsequently the most defense are, are consistently those which set out to intentionally insult their audiences under the guise of progressivism and more realistically, neoliberalism. After all, didn't you just love Marvel's first potential crossover with the Fox universe being a bait and switch joke? Yeah, wasn't that great? No, well, you're just not accepting of female-led projects or women behind the camera. Get with the current year. On the other hand, Black Adam, for all the flaws of its final cut, was made with not just out of its star and producer's personal love of the character, but with respect for the fans. At the end of the day, Johnson did not set out to intentionally poke at fans in order to milk the marketability of their frustrated reactions, but to make what he thought would be a solid and entertaining time for fans. Absolutely did. It completely delivered as a fan film. And arguably, he did just that, as despite the film's above rejection by critics, the film holds a resoundingly positive audience score on both Metacritic, 7.5 across 316 reviews, and Rotten Tomatoes, 90% over 5,000 plus verified views. That is high. Further, he's stuck by his philosophy post-release, crediting fans in full with the film's success. I mean, you, you, what more could you? This is all you want as a fan. This is all I want. The phenomenal 90% audience score for Black Adam is so gratifying for so many reasons, tweeted Johnson on October 22nd. 15 years. Thank you all for so much for all the love and support. In the end, the only thing that matters to me is sending the people home happy, he concluded. And that's what I'll always fight for. What a guy. How could you not support that? At the end of the day, legacy media has once again proved that they are existing by the creed of rules for thee and not for me. It's okay when we do it. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up when you like it. And I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.